G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve O here with another video and today I want to bring you um, dual edge monostable circuits. Now this has probably been done before so I'm not going to claim to be the first to have done it. Um, I'll probably do a search and find that someone has done it but uh, I was derping around as I normally would and I found a way to make a, a dual edge monostable circuit which I want to show, show to you. Let's put a few more on there and let's, uh, let's work with it. So this one here is just a, uh, I guess, a use for it. But let me first show you the system. This is my dual edge monostable circuit. As you can see, it works with lever input and also with button input. It doesn't matter what the input is, um, as long as the input is uh, longer, I guess, if it, than two ticks, um, it will work just fine. If it is less than two ticks, so you won't need a monostable circuit because you've already got one to create the one tick. So basically how it works, let's get into the science behind it. Um, what we've got here is a piston with a block and then a repeater um, like so. So the input is either from back there or up here or whatever or from the sides, doesn't matter how you do the input, but the input um, sends one tick down here and it takes two ticks to close the circuit to close off this piston. So the piston takes two piston two ticks to extend. Uh, in the meantime, one tick from this repeater has got through and uh, to wherever it needs to go. So one tick goes through from the repeater and then the piston extends one tick later. Now on the falling edge, because the piston uh, because the piston takes two ticks to um, fully retract means nothing. Um, but what does happen is we've got one tick uh, delay stored in here because there's a repeater and so when we, it's the same with any system really, if we have um, a piece of redstone and a repeater with a lever, let's not connect them shall we? As you can see the one, the repeater turns off one tick after the rest of it so regardless of what the system is made of but the piston um, retracting it doesn't need to be fully retracted in order for redstone to escape, so it allows one tick out. So when we do that, it sends a tick, and then when we do that, it sends a tick. So yeah, that's how it works. Now these can also be tiled, as you can see over there as well. Um, one just has to be uh, one block higher than the other, and they work just fine, as you can see here. They work individually and, and um, don't affect each other. So if we wanted to use them for the same sort of sequence, like I've done here, um, you might add some kind of tricky me uh, mechanism like I've done here with a falling edge, or uh, sorry, a, a diminishing edge, where this will diminish one each tick, and each time one of these is retracted and it sends one tick to, to finish off the circuit. And then when I pull the item out for the last time, that block will fall and, as you can see in the corner of your eye, and that's it. So really simple to build and really easy to play with. Let me show you how to, how it's built. So we go and we make a four, uh, sorry, three blocks along on the bottom, with a repeater on here. Now, if you were going to do a a tileable version, you would need to alternate. This one here would be redstone at the bottom, and this one here still stays as a repeater. But we're going to do the, just the one uh, wide one. I might actually add the other one at the end. So the other one, we just simply put our piston on there, with a, a block on there, and a piece of redstone on there, and we're done. That's it. That's the whole seek system. And it works. Just to show that it works, let's add some, move these off to the side, only because this is powering that block, so we don't want to attach anything to that block, just because we get a false reading. So we go, boom, and boom. Done. It works. Now, for the tileable design, we do something a little bit different. Let's do the bottom one first. We want to do two blocks, and two blocks of redstone, and then a repeater with another one there. And come up here for our output. It's a little bit longer um, than the other one. Now, this one comes in a little bit more than the, the previous, and that's to, I guess, compensate for the other. Now, let's start making the other one before I, I get too ahead of myself, but we want to put a repeater on the backs of those two, so they go into this block here, so it's a little bit different. Um, have a repeater on, sorry, a piston on the top there with some blocks underneath, this one being a repeater and this one being a piece of redstone. So it's a little slightly different, 
this one comes up one earlier, and that's just so that we don't have the two of them mixing and matching and whatever. And that's it. Now to stop these two from uh, from mixing and matching, we put a block there, so it's like honeycombing it. And let's put this up one actually. Let's put our outputs on here, just to uh, to show that it works. Upwards, <laughs> and that's it. So let's put some uh, some levers on there, and take a look. So this is input number one. That works just fine, doesn't activate the other piston, and input 2 doesn't activate the other piston. So yeah, it works. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this has been helpful to people. Um, it, like I said, it probably has been done, so if it has, I do apologise. Uh, like with, I guess, a few of my other creations, um, someone just beat me to the punch. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm steve and I'll catch you next time. See you later. Got a little Swedish there. Yeah.